it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 11 of my giant Hulkbuster suit build. At the end of the last part, I left you with the ability to attach the arms, or at least the forearm to the upper arm, um, and I mentioned that I was going to install a motor to turn this pulley in this episode, and also work out how when the suit is at rest, and I'm not in it, um, the arm doesn't just uh, disappear around the back there. So we need to put some... Uh, bits of constraint in there so that we can hold that arm in place in its natural position and when I get into the suit I can then move it around. Um, I also mentioned that I was going to counterbalance the forearm so we don't put all of the force on the motor to turn this um, gear or pulley around the pivot point. So um, I was going to build the front of the bicep and build a cage and then have a effectively a fake piston which will be a spring which ties the front of this forearm to the bicep, so it's sort of sprung in position and the motor doesn't need to exert very much force. Um, what I've actually found is that if I put a bungee on in the right place and hook that onto there, that, that actually works quite well and it saves me from building the bicep cage which will add extra weight. I've also found that if I take a stick, it's just a piece of wooden dowel, and shove that in the right place, like so. Then I can actually make that uh, arm hang quite naturally. And um, it's also nicely sprung, so it's nicely counterbalanced, which means I don't need to exert too much force on that pulley to move it in either direction. And remember the bottom of the arms are going to be fully animatronic, controlled by joysticks um, in the upper arm. So um, that works quite nicely. So I probably need to do some minor adjustments and also need to use a bungee that isn't yellow but um, that allows the arms to hang in quite a natural position. So I'm going to be working on that today, um, sorting out a proper thing for this stick and hopefully installing the motor to operate the forearm. So I've 3D printed some ends for my sticks which are just basically forks with a hole in so I can cable tie them onto the bungee and the same on the other end which will fit onto a screw or some other mounting. I should add that these sticks are eventually going to look like pistons so I'm going to be using some PVC pipe um, to make them look like hydraulic pistons or something like that and the location of those is where I wanted to have some fake pistons anyway. So I'll get those glued up, I'm going to stick the ends on with Gorilla Glue and then we'll attempt to position them. So it's pretty amazing what difference a couple of bungees and a couple of sticks can make. So let's have a closer look at this arm mechanism. As I mentioned before, I put the stick in, it floats quite nicely, and even more so now. So um, we've got quite a good motion there, and it takes hardly any force on that elbow to, um, to turn it in either direction. So that means hardly any load on the motor. Also, when it's straight, it hangs at um, a slightly better posture away from the body uh, with more of a straight arm. Now, um, I mentioned previously in one of the videos I wanted to, to activate the electronic aspects of the suit remotely over Wi-Fi for a web server. So being able to move those elbow hinges is going to be quite good when I'm not in the suit because um, we get all of this other arm motion as well, even though we're only driving the elbow, so that works quite well. Now, I've attached those, these sticks uh, with cable ties to a screw for now and to the bungee. Um, and that, of course, means it can move in all directions and it can still stretch right out. Um, because basically the bungee just stretches. So we've got uh, quite a good range of motion there. So as I mentioned before, that's going to be looking like a piston and that's going to be into the inside of the bicep, essentially. So if you can imagine the bicep front coming over this, um, that's the closest we can get to pistons coming up inside the biceps, which is kind of the look you get in these big mechanized suits. Maybe there's three of them in parallel of course they're fake, they don't do anything, and it's just really a fixed stick. So for the elbow motors I'm going to be using these motors instead of cordless screwdrivers like I did for the rest of the arm features. And these are the Como Drills uh, 919D series, which are rated at 4.5 to 15 volts, so we've got quite a good range there. Um, and these are the 810 to 1 geared version that have a gear, a metal gear box actually attached to them. Um, and they're quite hefty and have quite a lot of torque. So we're going to be running them on PWM anyway, so we have um, an acceleration curve. But let me just power one of these off, um, basically 12 volts. So they go pretty slow anyway, and really what we need is probably 
we only need roughly a quarter turn at the turn of the forearm so um, I think we only really need to gear this ratio down um, a sort of by uh, a one to two to drive the big pulley so on the left is the pulley we already printed in the last part which is attached to the elbow hinge the smaller pulley on the right is going to be attached to the motor now it looks quite a bit smaller but in fact the circumference is roughly half that of the big pulley so that means it will need to go around twice for one turn of the big pulley um, in reality we only really need to move the um, elbow probably something like quarter of a turn or just over to go from straight to bent so that means that I actually only need the small pulley to do half a turn or just over um, in order to achieve that motion. So the motor goes quite slowly, so I think that's going to be um, about the right gearing ratio. The two small holes on the right hand side of that small pulley are an anchor point to anchor our um, pull cord or, or drive belt or whatever we use. Probably it's going to be Ninja Flex or some other cord. So the pulley won't need to go round anywhere near more than probably just over half a turn so therefore we can anchor that off and um, that's going to work quite well so let's try that to start with let's print it out and see how it works So here are my 3D printed parts, I've uh, of course got the pulleys attached on there and I've also printed these extra mounts so the original mount on these motors is just a thin piece of metal that's only attached at one end so I've made this plastic thing that slots on it gives me some extra mountings so that I can fix that down a lot more stably so let's get those attached to the arms and see how well it works Right, so I've installed the motor on the back of the arm here. I'm actually using nylon 3D printer filament as a drive belt at the moment. I tried Ninja Flex, but it's a bit stretchy. Um, so that seems to be quite good. It's quite tough and it's the same as I used for pulling the fingers in the hand. So that's a straight arm, which is as straight as it goes. Obviously it doesn't need to bend back the other way. And that's pretty much the range of motion to bend, which, um, can still be modified but that's pretty good for now I think so let's just take that down again at the moment obviously it gets caught on the thigh but when my arm is in there I'll be able to um, push that outwards plus my thighs won't be made of raggedy cardboard there we go so I've 3d printed some more parts which are these things and I've decided that I'm going to make the pistons which are basically fake pistons that cover the wooden dowel and the bungees so I've got some PVC pipe here and I've cut the back out of it and these inserts um, well they go inside like this and that allows a smaller piece of pipe that also has the back cut out of it to snap in and then obviously from the front that'll make what looks like a piston and its plunger so I'm going to get those glued together and sprayed silver and then we'll attach them up to the suit. So I've painted up the cylinders, obviously these are hollow on the back and they just clip on over the bungee and on over the wooden dowel. They'll eventually be glued in place. The bicep is going to eventually cover this end and this cylinder is going to sit further down when I've sorted out this bungee. So I won't be using a yellow bungee, I've got some black ones which are a bit too long and they're going to probably be doubled up because as weight builds up on the arm um, obviously this is going to hang lower and lower so moving it up higher is going to put more force on the motor so there'll be more tension on the bungee which means the bottom hook of the bungee won't be here so this cylinder can sit slightly lower so that's all i've got time for today this is the whole look of the thing which um is looking pretty awesome to me next time i'm going to be building some more parts for the arms with the rest of the shells and some more mountings for some more of the bicep pieces and hopefully we can sort of see where the, the shoulder bells are going to fit in um, and after that we can start working on the body panels and replacing all these temporary cardboard ones with proper foam PVC and foam and 3D printed parts like the rest of the pieces. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future updates on this project and other projects. 
like my social media pages, and also don't forget to check out last Friday's video about X-Robots group projects and my new Facebook group. Check out some other videos in my channel, including my scrap metal inspired 3D printed HR Geiger alien xenomorph suits, my Iron Man build, and of course more information on my Iron Man Hulkbuster cosplay.